Hello everybody, my name is Tristan Pierce, owner of an online rare plant shop called Tristanical. Check it out after this video. And today I wanted to quickly go over what my top five favorite houseplants are for the month of January because it does change honestly by the day. But let's just say for example, my house was on fire. What are going to be the top five plants that I will grab, huck out the door with me in order to rescue them? These five plants are it. Four of them are for philodendron, two crawling, two climbing, and one of them is an alocasia, which I don't know if I've shown you my alocasias before. I like them. I think they're a little bit underrated, so I'll just let you decide for yourself. So in no particular order, I'm just going to grab them based on like which one is closer to me. The first one that I would survive from a catastrophic house fire is philodendron, pastazanum. Oh, sorry, the light. The sun is actually shining for once. I know, sickening. This was the leaf in my last video that you saw. It was like opening against the wall. I rotated it and now it looks fantastic. If I can get it without the light on it. Look at that, damn. And yes, this one is one of the crawling ones. You can see it's kind of just making its way out of the pot as they do. This one, along with the other crawling one, I like them in the sense that they also don't require as much sunlight. You can kind of tell even by looking at this one that my grow lights are just a little too intense because they're getting like slightly chlorotic around the edges here. But especially in the Pacific Northwest, I think a crawling philodendron just ends up doing better because more often than not, it's overcast, unlike today, which does not make sense whatsoever. The next one is an alocasia. This one I think is my all-time favorite and it's growing in a way that everyone says is not normal. This is an alocasia silver dragon. Oh my god. This looks so great on camera too. I think I'm in love. I'm obsessed with this. Like, hello. Do you? <gasps> it's very silvery obviously on the front. Mine gets splotches of different kinds of silver. I don't know if it'll show up on camera but this area where my finger is is two different different shades of silver and on the backs of the leaves it has red veining. When I said this isn't growing the way that people said they should, I mean usually they're supposed to drop some older leaves when they put out these giant ones and mine doesn't lose leaves at all. Some of these leaves are original from when I bought it over a year ago and it's just continuing to go. It has popped out and has some new little babies over here so if you're not familiar they grow very similar to like bananas if you know how those grow where the rhizomes or the corms or whatever you want to call them they'll shoot out grow roots and grow a new plant that you can then divide off of them. I haven't done that yet with this one. I see it's trying to do it again. Right there, do you see that little green spot right there? It's growing a new baby, so that is fantastic. This plant grows on the shelf that's actually behind the camera next to my refrigerator. I have a like strip of grow light on that shelf and it gets 12 hours of sunlight every day. It gets some of the cold air off the refrigerator and it's thriving. This is beautiful. Okay, I'm seriously battling the sun. The next one is the other crawler that I'm gonna put in my favorites this month. The Plowmanii. Ooh, this is a brand new leaf. So similar to the pastazanum, another cool thing that I really like is all the red right here. So this is the catafil and it's basically red. But again, just like the other one, you might be able to see that it's a little, a little chlorotic. And that's because of the light intensity in my grow room. They just don't need it. They don't need it as much as everything else really does. The next one is, I think I showed you one of these in my last video and it was a single plant, but I'm gonna show you my other plant setup that I have for these because this is insane. Okay, so oops, let's get this leaf out of the way. This right here is philodendron varicosum and I think I have I have five or six growing in this one pot up this pole because I'm just trying to get them as large as possible then I'll propagate them and sell them to you. Now this plant would go with me in a fire because I'm obsessed with this. This is beautiful to me. The red on the back, the fur on the petiole, just something about this really speaks to me in a way that just no one else understands. 
I'll just say with these, they are extremely temperamental to ship, but once you get them established, they do really well. This also needs fairly high humidity. My grow room runs at about 65%, actually it's 65% in this room as well. Basically, I'm in a wet climate, so I don't have to really worry about low humidity except in the summertime because if you let them get too dry, they will do this. So this is a splendid, but this leaf is missing an edge here because it got stuck when it was unfurling. And then there's also low humidity damage like on this one. There's just a little bit of brown spots on it. And that's what's gonna happen to the varicosum if they get too dry. They have a hard time opening the leaves and they get a little brown. They just don't like it. But other than that, it's great easy to grow plant. Okay, and number five is one that honestly, everyone's gonna think I'm doing this at this point because I'm selling them on my shop, but I'm just honestly obsessed with it. I posted a video on my Insta, or a photo on my Instagram story of this reflecting the light, and someone said that it looked like it was painted, and oh my god, this is Philodendron Majestic. I think right now, this is the one that I'm like, I will just grab all of them in the grow room if my house is on fire. These should not exist because of how beautiful they are. A great close up there of the coloration of this. Ugh. There's just something about this. This one is also very easy to grow. I said before, I've kind of neglected this one that sits on my kitchen table. I have forgotten to water it. I have overwatered it and it's just trucking along. It's doing fine. And it does get direct sunlight on this table because right now it's morning, the sun is coming in, but then come around like noon, it'll start shining in here and then against this wall where I'm sitting. So it does really appreciate getting some intense light. I think that's why the leaves are sizing up as well. Watering, just when it gets dry, it'll be fine. I mean, same with this as well. This is very dry right now because the pot's not that heavy and it's doing okay because the humidity levels are fine, but I will, you know, eventually need to water it. So yes, those were my top five favorite houseplants for the month of January. So if you thought this was cool, if you thought it gave you some insight on some varieties of plants you might have not known about prior to watching this, definitely let me know because as my favorites change, I'm happy to do like a monthly top five, a quarterly top five, seasonal, you know, whatever, just to introduce you to some really cool plants and just hear why I like them and why I think they should be rescued if my house was burning down. So with all of that being said, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you're not because over 90% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed and that saddens me to the core. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.